Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Aliens and UFOs video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's start the whole new series here based on your newer entries. Thank you so much for your suggestions. Please go ahead and continue to do so. I'm going to probably do about maybe five, six, maybe a little more depending on uh, my timeline. But yes, this is one of the newer entries here and it has to do with a very fascinating case. In this case involving a chase between some police officers and a UFO. There have been past stories I've chronicled where their police officers either had a UFO stumble upon them or vice versa, but they pretty much just stayed in one standard location. Here though, you have a story involving an actual police chase, like the ones you see on TV every now and then, but instead of a suspect fleeing a scene, here you have them chasing a UFO. So a UFO is actually fleeing the cop in a way very fascinating stuff when I was reading the information and it has to do with this uh, you're looking at one interpretation of it now is basically known as the Portage County Ohio UFO chase so let's go ahead and let's talk about all the bizarre info associated with this notorious incident so what was this Portage County Ohio UFO chase. Well, it was something that occurred, you have to go a little bit back in time to the 60s to be specific, April 17th, 1966. So not too far back, but still a couple of decades back. And there, the location was a place called Portage County, which is located in Ohio, hence the name essentially of this infamous chase. And the time period is roughly around 5 a.m. or so. There are several witnesses to this chase but the main primary one has to do with two officers who first came across this UFO. So the way the story goes, around 5 a.m. that early morning day, these two officers were investigating a car, just an abandoned car there on the side of the highway. You've seen abandoned cars on a highway before. You'll notice sometimes that they have like this orange sticker on them. Usually it's because a cop has investigated them and then found them to be abandoned and then they go off to the auction place or who knows what else so I imagine something like this was occurring with these officers the two of them one of them went by the name of Deputy Sheriff Dale Spower and then the other one went by the name of Mounted Deputy Wilbur Barney Neff they were there on that intersection a place called Route 224 looking at this car now one of them the guy by the name of Dale Spar was not inspecting the car instead he was the lookout while his partner was the one that was actually doing the official inspection of the car which made sense because whenever one officer is doing the inspection the other one is looking out to make certain that nothing is going to come up towards them and accidentally hit them or anything else that would just surprise them. So that's what he was doing. In fact, the sheriff, this Dale Spar, described it as such. He said, I always look behind me so no one can come up behind me. But when I looked in this wooded area behind us, I saw this thing. It was this UFO, in fact, that you're looking at now. The way he stated was at this time it was coming up to about treetop level, I'd say about 100 feet, and then that's when it started moving towards us. Yes, even though it was 5 a.m., it was still dark enough for them to make out this bright light, or him at least, to make out this bright light of this UFO. It apparently caught their attention and vice versa, and then it started coming straight towards them. Now, the other officer, that mounted deputy, uh, Wilbur Neff, he was still actually looking at the car, so he wasn't paying attention. And then that's when uh, the, the Dale Spar got his attention the other guy turned around and then sure enough he saw there for about a minute with his mouth wide open what it was and it was so curious there was uh, the, the description of it seems to be it was just a UFO almost like a cone shaped UFO and it was very very bright like it was something along the lines where it was bright enough that you would think that it would start burning things because of its brightness but no this guy Dale Spar stated that he looked at his hands he looked at his clothes nothing Thing was burning no matter how close it got in fact it got so close it was basically right over them and it was so bright also that he said that it's the kind of brightness that would make your eyes essentially water 
And then uh, the way that the he stated it is there was only a small sound, like there was the sound of a hum, like a transformer that was being loaded or an overloaded transformer when it changes. I can kind of see somewhat like what he's stating, like imagine that nondescript hum that you usually hear large machines have whenever they're just operating, even if they're not doing anything, they're just operating as is. There's always like this low bass type hum, and I imagine and that's what this was whenever he saw this UFO right above them and then afterwards they finally snapped to attention uh, they, they finally started making sense into what they should do next the decision was made to get you know something in between them because they were out there out in the blue even though there was their car nearby they were still outside of it while this UFO was right above them so they did they went back for their car got in it and then they just sat there it was at this point though that this UFO decided maybe it just wanted to move forward it just this this these two humans were no longer of interest to it so it started to move east but then stopped curiously enough I mean it started to move away from them and then when it was a distance somewhere around 250 feet away it decided to stop maybe it was just trying to catch their attention one more time and so the two officers they were thinking you know what are we gonna do there's there's nothing that this thing is doing outright what are we gonna do they actually radioed back into the station there was an off-duty officer a sergeant there by the name of Schoenfeld and he told them actually to follow it so that was also a very interesting decision there because they wanted to make sure that he wanted that, that they could keep it under observation and at the very least try to get a photo something that shows proof of what they were seeing so the official chase was on they turned on their car they started heading towards the UFO and then the UFO started going away from them it was all too much of a coincidence like this wasn't by accident one started the other one chased it that's essentially how it was and they did so for a good while in fact the way the story goes they were doing from start to finish about over an hour's time uh, in involving this chase this thing was going faster than they were very easily in fact because at one point this guy this 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 officer spar stated that they were going over a 100 miles an hour in their car just to keep up pace with it. No doubt this thing could go much, much faster, but the UFO was making sure that they were not getting too far behind while at the same time not making easier. And it was moving east, it was moving west. At one point, it was almost like going in an opposite direction. And then it stopped um, whenever also at another point that the car was was getting lost, I guess. Like they didn't catch up to it enough and they saw it or they didn't see it anymore. And so this thing stopped to make sure that they could find it again. And then that's when it continued afterward. There was yet another witness that came into play here. An officer by the name of Wayne Houston who was at a nearby town, Palestine, Ohio. He was actually hearing a lot of this conversation on the radio because during this official police car chase of the UFO they were consistently broadcasting where their location was it's just the standard habit of any police officer where they're always stating that they're at so-and-so intersection then they're at so-and-so intersection they just do so for the protection and to make sure that it's being chronicled and when that happens he realized that they were coming up very soon to his location and then sure enough he actually saw just like straight out of a movie the UFO passed by first and then afterward the sheriff's cruiser the one containing the original two officers blazed by as well I mean imagine that like in, in, in a chase movie anything involving like something like a like a robbery uh, where you see the police officer waiting in the alley he sees the perps car drive by and then followed by the other police car but in this case it's a UFO how crazy is that I mean, this is the stuff that where, uh, where truth is indeed stranger than fiction. So he actually joined the chase, and then now you had two cars essentially going after this uh, this UFO. Eventually, though, the chase was so long that the original two officers' car was almost out of gas, and so. 
that's at one point where they decided to try to fill up as quickly as they could and this was a second point where the UFO stopped the UFO actually stopped and waited for them yet again that shows of course high intelligence with this thing making sure that it wasn't gonna lose them again and it purposely was waiting for them to start the chase all over again it puts this in a whole different mindset in terms of what this whoever was in the UFO what they were doing and what they were thinking like they were actively consciously making purposeful choices towards uh, making sure that you know they can still be in view of these police officers whoever uh, whoever was essentially within it and then as they were filling up as quick as they could they heard on the radio a broadcast that by this point there were some planes from the local air force that were being deployed to try to intercept this UFO I guess by this point uh, the word was out and then uh, the, the, the military or the Air Force was going to get involved and it's almost as if the UFO itself was listening to this radio broadcast and they, they say, uh, able to decipher it because no sooner did the words come out that the planes were going to come in that this UFO suddenly shot straight up and no longer wanted to be a part of this chase. This guy, this officer Spar, in fact, described that he stated like it was as if this thing heard every word that was said because it went phew, like straight up. And I mean, went up, friend. It didn't play no games. It went just straight up, straight up to the sky. And then that was it. That was the last they ever saw of this UFO. Of course, afterward, there was some sort of investigation that was done. All these officers, they gave their testimonies. There was even someone from the Air Force that came out. Out to try to find, you know, to try to interview people. He was a major Hector Quintanilla, who was the chief of, lo and behold, the Project Blue Book, the infamous official, if you could call that, UFO investigation from various uh, places of the military uh, in the United States. And so, in that case, he came out, but he did not have pleasant confrontation with a lot of the witnesses because, from his standpoint, he was telling them they did not see a UFO. They saw Venus, they also saw the moon, and they also saw, I think it was like a lost satellite or something involving a satellite that was just somewhere around that area. That's three things that apparently all these witnesses misidentified this UFO as, never mind the fact that at multiple points the UFO stopped to, uh, to make sure that it was still getting chased by these police officers and the fact that the that the moon doesn't essentially dart back and forth left and right you know east and west from a moving vehicle but no according to this major Hector Quintanilla he was telling him that this is essentially what they identified it as but all the hush up all the cover up worked even afterward because um, eventually like the story died down not much stuff was being reported afterward there was something uh, turned in to the University of Colorado which was to try to showcase and this was by a guy named William B. Witzel to try to showcase an investigation containing all these interviews all these signed statements all these sketches everything that was reporting this uh, this chase with the UFO but this University of Colorado UFO project that was initiated back in 1966 they did not include any of that info there within the case itself so again just goes to show when it comes to this cover-ups type stuff that um, if, if, it, if, if there's any effectiveness to it it can work like a, if, if, if a project or some kind of department determines they're not going to report anything or don't want anything reported then that's what essentially happens afterward but that's it that's pretty much all the info tied to this very fascinating case this Portage County Ohio UFO chase doesn't it read like something straight out of a movie something that could just fall under that category all you needed left uh, all that was left now is just a shootout between the UFO and the cops and that would have just made a perfect ending but no and in this case at least there was a very very riveting for over an hour chase involved so if anyone has any more info anything I might have missed please post those comments below maybe if someone knows more like from that area there in Portage County in Ohio anything else that stands out from from people that have lived there um, anybody family members that know because this, this happened in the 60s so there's still about to be some people that are still alive from that era so if anybody has that info please post 
system below. Right, everybody? Thanks again as always. Take care.